Mr. Speaker. I can assure you, Mr. Speaker, none of us is enjoying these proceedings of an impeachment motion against the Deputy President, and particularly those of us from the government side, the Kenya Kwanzaa Coalition. And for obvious reasons, Mr. Speaker, because he has been our leader, we have been in the trenches with him, fighting for this government. And so it has come to this, and I can assure you we are not particularly very um, excited about it. I personally have interacted with him on numerous occasions. If you look in the internet, Mr. Speaker, you will see photos of me dancing with the Deputy President, Mr. Speaker. I have followed these proceedings very keenly. All the 11 counts, um, one, the, uh, the, gross, the gross violations of the Constitution, Article 10, two, the one that talks about the public, the conduct of public officials, including the Deputy President, the one that talks about him being a principal assistant of the President and an extension of the Presidency, Article 147, that talks about his insubordination, and one that Sifuna has talked about, Article 160, that deals with undermining public institutions and particularly the uh, judges, Mr. Speaker. I have been born and grown up in Nairobi County, in Eastlands particularly. And where I come from, when we grow up, we are not even aware of each other's tribe. Our neighbor could be from any other tribe. And so when I hear the Deputy President talking and allocating shares to citizens, I am aware that he's excluding more than half the population of Nairobians from service delivery, the same people that me and Sifuna are always here fighting for every day for allocations and for services, Mr. Speaker. And I see that was not enough. He was in the CBD the other day addressing Nairobians in the Kikuyu language, assuming that all Mar Marikiti traders are Kikuyus, Mr. Speaker, nothing can be further from the truth. And sowing seeds of tribalism in Nairobi is very, very dangerous. If you have seen the slum setup, where we, people live together, all tribes together, I do not want to imagine if you sensitize these people and make them aware of their tribes and their lack of shares in their own country, Mr. Speaker. And finally, in future, I want to call upon presidential candidates to make it a very critical um, attribute of their running mates to have political maturity and to have a national outlook, Mr. Speaker. Because to some extent, we want to, to, to put some blame on the president because we are wondering what he looked at when he picked his running mates. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. First of all, I want to say that this is not about a relationship. It's not about a friendship that has deteriorated. I have been hearing people say, if it's about a relationship, if it's about a, 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 a marriage that has broken, why don't they go back and make peace and come together? No, Mr. Speaker. These two individuals, His Excellency the President and the Deputy President, did not come together so that they can live happily ever after and have children, Mr. Speaker. They came together so that they could deliver development to the people of Kenya, Mr. Speaker. So this, what we have been doing here for hours and hours, it pains me when I hear people saying, you know, about adultery and relationships and what, and I'm wondering, no. We have been here because of 11 counts, Mr. Speaker. A very serious impeachment motion because of not two, not three, but 11 counts, Mr. Speaker. In my condition, I have had to sit here and go through all 11 counts to understand which one actually has been substantiated and which one holds water. So no, this is not about a relationship. And we should not expect that because they came together, 
they should now go and sit somewhere and make peace. Now, and, and you know, stop disturbing us. No, Mr. Speaker, 11 counts of an impeachment motion is something very serious, Mr. Speaker. And I, it's very unfortunate that of the 11 counts, about four counts, Mr. Speaker, were not even substantiated, Mr. Speaker. It, very shocking. When you have a team of legal experts sitting down bringing 11 counts, at, at the very least, they should have even substantiated nine, Mr. Speaker. But four counts, ground two, when you talk about undermining a cabinet decision, how did we not have the witness come here to speak so that we can be able to understand? Some of us, we don't sit in cabinet, and we need to understand what a cabinet decision is, how it is undermined. Mr. Speaker, the witness did was not produced. We had another witness who did not come here in terms of undermining devolution. Governor Sakaja signed an affidavit, but then did not appear, Mr. Speaker. People must respect the Senate. Because when we are sitting here to analyze 11 counts, Mr. Speaker, honestly, in all fairness, they should at least be substantiated to some level. However, Mr. Speaker, I have lived through the post-election violence of 2007, 2008, and it is very strange that 2007 I was also pregnant, Mr. Speaker. And when I remember, Mr. Speaker, the things that triggered the post-election violence, Mr. Speaker, in 2008 of January, it was such utterances such as Musiguze Mlima, Mr. Speaker. They started as a joke, and before you knew it, matatus were being stopped, and people were being asked, get off the matatu and showcase your IDs, and arms and limbs were being chopped off, Mr. Speaker. So we might think it is a joke, this shareholding narrative, Mr. Speaker, but having lived through that post-election violence, and I remember very well, Mr. Speaker, that I even had to choose the people who are operating, you know, on me in 2008, because I was afraid, you know, as kisses, we love everyone. People always think we are traitors because we welcome everyone. So at that time, the attack on us was from both sides, Mr. Speaker. And so I therefore, I do not take this shareholding narrative as a light thing. I do not take this Musiguze Mlima as a light thing, Mr. Speaker, because I have been affected directly. And on that count, Mr. Speaker, I definitely have seen that it has been substantiated. We have seen the evidence, and we have even seen repeated utterances of causing divisiveness in this country, Mr. Speaker. And I want to say today, Mr. Speaker, this country is not about one person. It is not about William Ruto. It is not about Rigathi Gashagwa. This country is about the 50 million Kenyans who have to live in peace and under the national unity, Mr. Speaker. And for that reason, Mr. Speaker, I want to say that on that shareholding narrative, I hold my ground and I will definitely vote that he should be impeached. The impeachment process is always very tedious and very tiring. Going through what uh, His Excellency, the Deputy President has gone through, is not anything that you'd wish your relative or yourself to go through. So we tell him Pole and uh, we wish him a quick recovery. Would have wished if he was here, at least when uh, the senators are talking, uh, he, he can represent himself. But unfortunately, the procedure must go on because we are time bound. This leadership, we must make decisions for the people of Kenya. As myself, Stabitha Karanja, the Senator of Nakuru County, I pray to God to give me wisdom to make the right decision for my people. I represent a county that is a home for 42 tribes. Nakuru represents Kenya. Meaning, I must make the right decision to ensure that there is peace, peace in our county. But I want my Nakuru people to trust me, my Nakuru people, the people I represent, that I will make the right decision for them. When you look at the economic front, we all know the people who lead the economy of this country. Let's say the manufacturing, the hotels, insurances, the finance institutions. Unfortunately, I also come from that world. 
I came from the business world. The people driving this economy, all what they want is to ensure that there's stability in this country. So that they can, so that there's a stability that can guarantee conducive environment for them to do business. The deputy position, the deputy president's position, or even the deputy governor's position is a position that we need to think about. If you look, it has a history that every deputy president is unlikely that they survive. But we need to have the hiring and hiring to be given to the same person that hires. Rather than having those people bringing after firing, they want to fire, they bring them to the floor of the Senate. I wish we can go back to the Moi regime where they used to be sacked and nothing changes. They were hired as another one tomorrow the following morning. Politi fortunately, the political formation in this country have uh, representation from different uh, communities. I know we are all asking where we are, but when the boss says he doesn't want the person that is hired, a manager, it is very, very hard to say that you can f save, save that person. Because even if you save him, where is he going to work? He may even find the offices are locked. So I think he makes the right decision to ensure that this country moves because all what we are looking for is the stability of this country. And I know when I'm in this floor, if we unlikely that we don't save the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya, the one we have. The pre that deputy president came from one, uh, one community. I just pray that that position will be returned to the same community. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Asante.